Thank you. Wow. Thank you, everybody. Well, we broke a record. You broke your all-time record with attendance. So I know it's not because of me, but a lot of people came that normally don't come, and I'm very happy about that because home building is very close to my heart. That's where I grew up. My father uh, built homes in Brooklyn and Queens, and that's how he started. And he worked very hard building garages. He started off building garages because the car was sort of coming into vogue and people had houses, but they didn't have any place to store their car. And he worked very hard and he put my uncle uh, through school, MIT. My uncle went to MIT. My father worked very, very hard. Then my uncle went to graduate school. Then he became a doctor of this. And he went to MIT, and my father kept working. He said, does this guy ever finish school? <laughs> then he became a professor at MIT, and my father said, finally. And uh, it was amazing. But my father built houses, and he did it beautifully. And he'd go into the houses, and he'd check for nails. See, the bigger companies don't do this, but the individual guys that do the one or two or eight or ten houses a year, and we have all, everybody's represented. But my father would go and he'd pick up the sawdust and he'd pick up the nails, the extra nails, and he'd pick up the scraps of wood. He'd use whatever he could use and recycle it in some form or sell it. And it was a constant process and he did a beautiful job. And he would build a house. And in the old days, the really old days, it was $39,999. And I used to say to him, because I'd see the old ads, I'd say, Dad, why, what's, it's one penny. He said, here's the difference. At 39999 okay, 99 cents, I'll sell that house. At $4,000, I have no chance. Isn't that true? Right? You tell me. But it's, I've, I've always remembered that story. But it was, uh, it was true. And he, he did great. And uh, people across the street would build and it would take them longer, and their house wouldn't look as good, and it wouldn't be as well built as my father's houses. And uh, he'd sell, and they wouldn't. And then he'd go buy them out. And it'd fix up the house, and it'd sell it. Welcome to being a home builder, right? That wasn't part of the speech. But that wasn't going to be part of the speech. I don't know why. I just sort of, I freewheeled that, and I said, you know, because I'm so comfortable. I mean, honestly, I'm so comfortable in this business. And he taught me so much. I mean, more than anything else, he taught me so much. And we've built great buildings all over the world. We're building a great one now in Washington, D.C. It's almost completed. And it's about a year ahead of schedule, more than a year ahead of schedule. And it's under budget. And yet, we're, the quality is way higher than we ever thought we do. It's going to be one of the great hotels of the world. And you learn it right from the ground up. And you learn it from home building. If you can build a home, you can build anything. Because you have sort of every single trade. I always used to say, we have essentially 38 trades if you add them all up. And you better know every one of them. And you better get your right subs. And if you don't have the right subs, you got yourself a problem. And that's what happens. And over the years, you get familiar with people. But then the problem is the subs get so familiar that they start giving you high prices because they know you'll never use anybody but them, right? Right? And then every once in a while, we have to give it to somebody else to get their price. Oh, do I know you people well? Do I know you well? But you're great people, and you employ millions of people. I would say, I've always said the housing business is really the housing and home building business is the biggest business in the United States when you add it all up. Got to be the biggest business in the United States for jobs and everything else. And I know what you're going through. Uh, and one of the big things, I mean, taxes definitely, but the regulations are, are horrible. What's happening with regulations, horrible. And so we're going to be talking about this. We have a few people here, and uh, they may be backstage, but uh, Rick Scott is fantastic. Great governor, great governor. And Pam Bondi is here. Pam is here. Your attorney general, this is a fantastic person, a fantastic person who works so hard. And I don't know if she's in the room or if she's in the back, but wherever she is, she's a, a spectacular person doing a great job. 
And uh, Mike Huckabee is here, Governor Mike Huckabee, and he's in the room actually back in the corner, I believe, and I want to thank him for being here. There, We're doing a little traveling today around Florida. Uh, we're about even in the polls in Florida. And boy, the polls are really tightening up. They're getting a little bit nervous with their hundreds of millions of dollars that they're spending on ads. Uh, Clinton is getting a little bit nervous. Crooked Hillary, she's getting a little bit concerned. <laughs> hundreds of dollars. They spent, they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars. A friend of mine from North Carolina said, Don, please, I wish this election was over with. I can't, every single commercial is about you. Negative ads, negative ads. And he knows they're not true. Maybe a little bit true. <laughs> little bit. But mostly, honestly, mostly not true. It's made up stuff. And he said, it's unbelievable. He said, I'm dying to see an ivory soap commercial again. Can you believe it? That's up. So she's spending hundreds of millions of dollars on ads, hundreds of millions. And uh, a new poll just came out this morning that has us essentially very close to even. And I haven't spent anything. In fact, they have ads, you know, whatever the number is that she's got, just hundreds. And they have Trump, zero. I said, that's okay. That's okay. We sit back and wait. We sit back and wait. But we're doing, uh, I think we're doing really very well. Maybe better than anybody fully understands because we have a movement going on. Just like there's more people that have ever come to this event, and this is a big event, and this has been going on for a long time. And I've actually come to this event many, many years ago. But just like you set the record here, we set the record everywhere we go in terms of attendance, in terms of enthusiasm. Last night was unbelievable. We had an event, unbelievable. But uh, there's great enthusiasm because they want to see lower taxes, they want to see less regulations, they want to see a built-up military. Our military is totally depleted. They want to see borders. We have a country or we don't have a country. They want to see jobs. They don't want to see our jobs leaving the United States and going to Mexico and every place else. And, and uh, I just see this on Housing equals jobs, right? I don't know whose sign they are, but it's true. Housing, truly one of the big, one of the big, uh, one of the big deals. And you know, we talk about different things with, uh, I'll go off the housing subject for a second, but we talk about uh, different things and what's going on with our government. Our government isn't giving us good protection. Our government has unleashed ISIS. I call President Obama and Hillary Clinton the founders of ISIS. They're the founders. In fact, I think we'll give Hillary Clinton the, you know, if you're on a sports team, most valuable player, MVP. You get the MVP award. ISIS will hand her the most valuable player award. Her only competition is Barack Obama, between the two of them. So, we'll see. But I think we're going to do, I think we're going to do very well. Uh, we have a situation that I was just with some of you folks, and we were talking about different elements of what's going on with the housing. And they would tell me the regulation. In fact, I noticed when I mentioned regulation before, everybody perked up because you're being driven wild with regulation. But in the last five years, regulations on building houses, building homes, you know, building homes, and you all know what you're doing, have increased by 29%. And now, a number I was just given, which is shocking, uh, you have a 25% of your total cost is in regulation. I don't understand how that's possible. In fact, where's your leader? He told me that number. I, it, you wouldn't even think that that's a possible number. 25% the cost of a house is regulation. So that's a pretty sad uh, story. And I will say this, and I say this to you very strongly. If short circuit Hillary Clinton ever gets elected, it's only going to be worse. It's going to get worse. It's going to be four more years of Obama, but it'll be worse because she's mandated to go to the left because 45% of, you know, Bernie's people, they want her to head in that direction. And with judges, Supreme Court judges, you know, a lot of the problems that you have are judicial with litigation, lawsuits. I know the problems that you have. You'll build a beautiful house and sometimes you make mistakes. Okay? And sometimes you build a lousy house, okay? And they should sue you. <laughs> but I know the people, many of the people in this room, you're professionals, you build great products, you have a tremendous problem with the court system. I've heard it. 
a really big problem with the court system. So we're going to make sure that, uh, you know, we're going to make sure that a lot of the things that are happening to you just can't happen. We want it to be a fair system. You have a lot of frivolous lawsuits. Has anybody in this room had what they call oh. a frivolous lawsuit? Frivolous? Uh, I would think that's all that, not that many. Seriously. They're just embarrassed to raise their hands, okay? <laughs> I'll bet you it's every single person in the room. But very interestingly, a Washington Post story was written yesterday that was so devastating to Hillary Clinton. I couldn't believe it, primarily because it was in the Washington Post. And when she was a senator, because, believe me, they are a one-sided deal, but the press is extremely dishonest, so that's okay. You have to bull through it. The people are starting to really get it. I mean, the people understand they're smart. The American voter, the American people are smart. They understand what's going on with the, with the horror that we know as the press. I mean, we have one newspaper that actually admitted that they're covering me unfairly. But they said, we hate him so much, it doesn't matter. It's okay. <laughs> Did you believe it? A major paper. But I knew that before, so, you know, I was like reading the story. I'm like bored reading the story. <laughs> but the Washington Post did a story. The Washington Post did a story on Hillary Clinton two days ago that was so devastating in terms of if you're looking for, like, what you folks want. You want efficiency. You want jobs. We want jobs. The country wants jobs. When she was a person running for the United States Senate from New York, she said things that were so unbelievable. She was going to take, because her husband signed NAFTA. NAFTA destroyed upstate New York. Destroyed it. Our factories closed. Our jobs fled. Many to Mexico, which is the third world. I mean, when you look at, when you look at Mexico, we're like third world now. When you look at the factories that they're building there. I don't know. Has anyone seen, has anyone seen what's going on in Mexico? They're taking our businesses. They're taking our plants. A friend of mine builds plants. He said, it's the eighth wonder of the world, what's going on in Mexico. How are we doing in the United States? Eh, not so good. Okay? Not so good. What a sad, sad state of affairs. Well, NAFTA made that all possible. And it was signed by her husband. But she's running for the Senate years ago, and she said that she's going to straighten out upstate New York, and she's going to add 200,000 jobs, and it's going to be unbelievable. Disaster. A disaster passed no legislation that helped, couldn't get out of her own way. Uh, it went down like you've never seen, one of the worst in the country. And it's been a total unmitigated disaster, except for the people that made money trying to work out her plans. They made a fortune, the consultants and others. And she'll make a speech today, and she'll be talking about what she's going to do for the country. She, don't, she doesn't have the talent to do it. And if she wanted to do it, just remember this, and I think very importantly, if she wanted to do it, she couldn't because her donors wouldn't let her. You know, when we look at Hillary and we look at, you look at her donors, her hedge fund donors. I had a chart made up yesterday, which was amazing. Uh, she's taken in $48 million from hedge funds. I've taken in $16,000. I'm trying to figure out who the 16,000 is from. But these are people that, I mean, these are people that are very smart people. They're not necessarily nice people. I know half of them. But these are people that, you know, when they give her $5 million and $2 million and $10 million or whatever they give, and they raise all that money, they're working for them. They want that for them. They're not looking for the country. So by my putting up money from my campaign, I financed my primaries. I'm financing now this. I'm raising a lot of money for the RNC and for the Republican Party. And we're getting tremendous small contributions, thousands and thousands of small contributions, $61 average or thereabouts. And it's amazing we've taken in a lot of money. And I think very few Republicans would be able to do that. But you have to take a look at this Washington Post story because it's amazing. But I wrote down some notes, and I just wanted to talk about uh, the policies of Obama and Clinton and where we are and what they've done. And the last thing you want is four more years of Obama. The last thing you want are judges put on the United States Supreme Court that are going to destroy our nation. We lost Judge Scalia, who was a great justice. He's a great judge. We lost him. 
That was shocking because he was going to be there at least another 10 years, and that seat was taken. But all of a sudden, before we even start, so this president actually could have as many as five. It's unlikely five, but probably four. Almost definitely three. It's a lot. But it could be an all-time record. Could have five. So that's probably the single most or one of the, certainly one of the very big. I mean, defense, I always say, is the most. We have to be safe. We can't let ISIS come in. We can't let the Syrians pour into our country like they are right now. We have no idea who they are, where they're coming from. We have no idea what their thought process is. We just don't know. And there's no way you can vet them. But they're pouring in. And Hillary wants 550% more to come in than we have right now, which is just insane. So we have to be smart. We have to be tough. And we have to be vigilant. And I will say that uh, President Obama and Clinton uh, have economic policies that have produced, you saw the latest report, 1.2 percent growth, right? 1.2 percent. If that ever happened in China, they'd have a revolution. They get to 7 percent or 8 percent, and they start devaluing their currency, and they start taking more business out of the United States. And we allow it to happen because we have people at the top that are not smart, number one, and are probably controlled by people that want it to happen, but they're not smart people. So China starts devaluing. And I have nothing against China. I like China. I, I have leases with China. The biggest bank in the world is a tenant of mine, one of my buildings in New York. I sell condos to the Chinese. The Bank of America building in San Francisco, I own that with a great partner. And I got that through China indirectly, indirectly. So I've had great relations. I've made a fortune with China, but they don't respect us. They don't respect our country. They don't respect our president. They don't like our president. Putin doesn't like our president. Putin has no respect for Obama whatsoever. Wouldn't it be nice if we could actually get along with Russia? Wouldn't that be a decent thing? Wouldn't that be nice? So, but there's no respect. But the 1.2 growth percent was a startling number for a lot of people. The national debt has nearly doubled under Obama. And by the time he gets out, it'll be more than doubled. The U.S. trade deficit, all of this work we do for trade, 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 we make all bad trade deals. It's nearly $800 billion last year. $800 billion, billion, billion dollars with a B. 800 billion. We have great negotiators. If I used home builders to negotiate, that wouldn't be happening. <laughs> Believe me. I could take 90% of the people in this room, maybe higher, but I could take nine, because I know the people in this room. I could take 90% of the people in this room, put them in charge of some of these trade deals that we make with these different countries, and our country would be flush. We'd be rolling in dough, but we had a trade deficit of $800 billion. We had a trade deficit with China. This is the big one, of $505 billion. Think of a trade deficit. Does anybody think they couldn't do a better deal? Raise your hand if you think you couldn't do the better deal. Is anybody? Oh, he raised his hand. He hit the guts. Get out of here. We don't want you. He's not a true home builder, am I? That was very cute, thank you. I'm sure you don't believe that, but that's okay. If you do, boy, your business must be suffering, right? <laughs> Nearly 24 million Americans in their prime earning years are out of the labor force. In the last seven years, another 14 million people have left the workforce. And Hillary Clinton's gonna make a speech tonight. She's gonna raise taxes, $1.3 trillion. I'm gonna cut taxes, big league, big league. We're having a massive cut in taxes. We're having a massive cut in regulations. You know? And that includes banking regulations that for you people, because it's impossible for your people to go get mortgages. So hard for people to get mortgages today. Unless you have a lot of money in the bank, and unless you don't need money, you can't borrow, right? You can't borrow. I have friends that call me, could you give me a reference to a bank? I said, why would you need a reference? You got a good business. They said, no. 
they want us to have like more money than we want to borrow. I said, well, if you had that, you wouldn't have to borrow, right? So why? It's impossible with Dodd-Frank, with all of the different things that you have. And I know people that can't get mortgages to buy houses. And that's why your housing numbers are way down from what they were in terms of new capacity. One in five American households do not have a single member of the labor force. Think of that. Home ownership, well, this is a biggie for you. Home ownership is at its lowest rate in 51 years. Now think of that. You know, it's always like the American dream, right? Owning a home was the American dream. It's at the lowest rate in 51 years. And I have a chart. Where's that chart? Aha. Uh -huh. Look at this. See, I'm into the world of charts lately. <laughs> it's so descriptive. So here's a chart. Most of you can see. You don't need very good eyesight to see what's going on. So here's Obama. And here's the end. He's not finished yet. Isn't that a terrible, no seriously, isn't that a terrible picture? Look at that. Home ownership. So you take a look at what's happened. That's the American dream right there, folks. And then they wonder why 25,000 people come to my rallies and why 10,000 people and 10,000 and 5,000 when we have a room that holds 200 and why why, you know, I mean, even your meeting, it was supposed to be one third this size. And look at it, but look at this. And to me, that says so much because it's home ownership. That's the American dream. And it's the lowest it's been in 51 years. Wow. So I think that's a pretty sad thing. I hope you know I had that chart not necessarily made for you, but I figured it would be a good one to pull out. Okay. <laughs> Nearly 12 million people, more Americans, are dependent on food stamps. And 2 million more Latino Americans live in poverty. Latino Americans, incredible people. They're living in poverty, 2 million. 58% of African American youth are not employed. 58%. American households are earning $4,000. So see, this is, to me, so incredible. American households are earning $4,000 less today than they were 16 years ago. The real number is 18 years ago. But this particular group says 16, statistically. 16 years ago, many workers are earning less money than they were earning in real dollars in 1970. And then you wonder why they're angry. You wonder why they really want a voice. And the voice is us. I mean, we have a movement going on. It's been an amazing thing. And the polls are getting very close, very, very close. It's very interesting what's happening. We will create millions of new good-paying jobs with an across-the-board income tax reduction. I mean, this is one of the things that we have to do. We have to do. We're going to create millions of jobs. Now, everybody admits, you know, the 5% number is just a number to make politicians look good, to make the presidents look good. Not only Obama, it was there before him. Although it's gotten actually worse because more people, the way they, the way they analyze these numbers, more and more people, the number gets lower and lower and people can't find work. You know, if you give up looking for a job, after months you go home, I can't find one, Dad. I can't find one, Mom. I can't find one to your wife or to your husband. Can't find a job. You go home and you, you give up. After a while, you give up. And everybody admits that there are no good jobs. The good jobs, we don't have anymore. Even the other side. We have jobs, we don't have good jobs. But you give up, you give up looking, and yet you are considered statistically employed. Because the number is a phony number, 5%. Every time I watch that, unemployment is down to 5%. It's not down to 5%. It's probably 20 or 21%. Some people think it's higher, but people want jobs and they quit. They, they give up looking. Everyone's taxes, we want to go down under my plan. Our three brackets, we're going to have three brackets instead of seven. We're doing a major, major, major simplification. The one company that will not be happy is H&R Block. 
No, I know people that go and spend a fortune on tax returns because they can't, it's too complicated, they can't figure it out. Um, many Americans are going to pay nothing. Now, they're going to pay zero because they're not making enough to live, but they don't want to send, they're not going to send a tax return. It costs a fortune bureaucratically, billions of dollars. And they don't have money and they're not going to pay. So we're going to make that a little easier process. Hillary Clinton has supported tax increases on the middle class for her entire career. She's voted for higher taxes 235 times in the Senate. I thought it was more than that. That doesn't sound. Think of it. She's, ra she's voted for tax increases. And by the way, she's proposing a big one today in her speech, her teleprompter speech. She's got a, she's got Her speeches are so short, though. They don't last long. You know, they're like, 10 minutes, let's get out of here. Go back home and go to sleep. <laughs> Three days later, she gets up and she does another one and goes back home and goes to sleep. <laughs> oh, boy, is ISIS hoping for her. Is China hoping? Can you imagine China? They come in. You ever negotiate with the Chinese? They're tough. They're tough. You got to hit them back with a lot of energy. So now she's planning another job killing $1.3 trillion tax increases. Her plan, $1.3 trillion tax. Think, her plan will tax many small businesses, you folks, by almost 50%. Enjoy, enjoy your tax increase, folks. That's what it is. I've cut mine down to 15 percent, 15 percent for businesses. So no small business in our plan will be taxed more than 15 percent. And we'll allow businesses to expense new business investments, which is nice, right? We'll make average child care expense tax deductible for working families, a very big thing. And a very fair thing. We're going to, very fair thing. That was Ivanka Trump. She thought that was good. She really did. She felt very sorry. She's had three children now. And she thought it was very unfair to work in mothers and families what was happening. So, I, I, and I agreed with it 100%. We will eliminate the carried interest deduction, end corporate inversions, and other special interest loopholes. And we're going to repeal the death tax, the estate tax, the death tax. You know, I know so many families that have been destroyed by the death tax, where they have a business and the business is going along and the business has a certain value and they can't make a deal with the government and they end up losing their business. Sometimes they can't even sell it, but they end up losing their business or they have to sell their business. And the people that come in don't run the business the same way and the business goes out of business. Farmers are hit hard. Housing companies are hit hard, I guess. Housing companies are hit very hard, especially when you want to keep it going and you want your children to take over and keep running your business. And it's a very, very unfair situation and the tax is massive and it's and it doesn't amount to a lot of money for the country it's not a huge amount of money believe it or not but it 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 is just a destroyer of businesses the farmers are they don't know what to do about it they don't know what to do they go out of business over regulation which is a big problem is costing our economy two trillion dollars a year think of that and you are a big beneficiary of overregulation because there's nobody other than I would say the energy industry that's overregulated more than the home building industry and uh, nobody. We just went 25 percent, 25 percent the cost of a house. I think we should get that down to about two percent. You know, honestly, no, no, honestly, it's ridiculous. The U.S. economy today is 25% smaller than it would have been without the surge of regulations since 1980. I think that's true. So many businesses are knocked out. 
We will issue an executive order to impose a temporary regulation moratorium on new agency regulations. Very much like Governor Mike Pence, who's a terrific guy, by the way. Mike Pence, what a good pick that was. He's great. He is great. He's done such a job in Indiana, AAA rating, uh, low debt, low everything, and low unemployment. When he took it over, it was, it was a, well, they had a very good governor before him, too. The combination was incredible. Mike Pence has done an incredible job in Indiana, so I'm really honored to have him with us. He's been amazing. And he's a big cutter of regulation, that I can tell you. We'll cancel all illegal and overreaching executive orders signed by President Obama. We will eliminate all regulations that kill jobs. We will remove the bureaucrats who only know how to kill jobs, which is true, and replace them with experts who know how to create jobs without regulation, okay? Our goal is to keep jobs and wealth in America, and to keep them in America. We're not going to let him go to all of these countries that think we're the stupid people. They think we're the stupid people. We're not stupid. We have stupid leaders. And we can't take it anymore. And that's why we're doing this. And that's why I'm running. Because I got tired of watching an Iran deal. I got tired of watching a Sergeant Bergdahl deal. We get Bergdahl, a traitor. They get five killers that they've wanted for years. I get tired of watching these horrendous trade deals. I get tired of paying for everybody's military and getting a fraction of what it's costing us. You know, we pay for the military of many countries, many, many countries, not only NATO countries, but other countries, big ones, plenty of money. We get a fraction of what it's costing us. And if asked properly, they'll probably pay. And if they don't pay, congratulations. But we can't do this. This isn't 40 years ago. This isn't 30 years ago. We're going to owe $20 trillion very soon. And we have to build our country again. We have to rebuild our infrastructure. We've wasted $4 trillion, probably more than that. Somebody said five the other day. I used to say two. When I started this whole thing a couple of years ago, I'd say two, and, two trillion in Iraq. We got nothing except death and taxes. We got nothing. We have less power now in Iraq than the woman sitting in the front row who's never been to Iraq, okay? We have no power in Iraq. We have no power in Iraq. We've given Iraq to Iran. You know, Iran made the deal for the 150 billion, where they get back the 150 billion, and I always say, what a deal they made. That's one of the great deals. Actually, about a year ago, I amended that. Because for years and years, they were fighting and fighting Iraq and Iran. But their military was almost identical strength. And they'd fight. They like to fight. Great. Great. We should have never been there. And I said, don't go there. I was a civilian. Nobody cared. But I said, don't go there. You're going to destabilize the Middle East. But they'd fight and fight and fight. Then Saddam Hussein would drop gas. The other side would complain. They'd fight a little more. And they'd rest then go back to fighting. Then we obliterated one side. And as sure as you're sitting there, the greatest deal of all time is that we gave Iraq to Iran, okay? That's what we really gave. Forget the 150 billion. So Iraq has some of the greatest oil reserves in the world, and we handed them Iraq. We handed it to Iran, and we made Iran a very powerful. They, they were struggling. They were, gonna, they were dying two years ago with the sanctions and the problems. We made them powerful, very powerful. We gave them a path to nuclear weapons, which they'll have much sooner than people think. I'm telling you, we have incompetent leadership, incompetent leadership. And this is not what we want. And it'll change if I'm elected president, believe me. So, our goal is to keep jobs in 
America. Our goal is to keep wealth in America. We need wealth. A woman came up to me. She said, Mr. Trump, I didn't like the way you said we have to be rich again. I said, I don't like it either, but we have to. We want to save Social Security. We want to save our industries. We want to save people. We want to save Medicare. We want to save a lot of things. You have to have, you have to bring back our wealth. Our wealth is, is being dissipated. We're in a bubble. We're in a big, fat, ugly bubble. And she said, I understand it, but could you say it nicer? I said, I promise. Fucking yeah. it. <laughs> Hillary Clinton wants to tax and regulate our economy to death. So just remember, if you vote for Hillary Clinton, and if she gets in, it's hard to believe she'd get in with all of the dishonest things she's done. Hillary Clinton wants to tax and regulate our economy to death. If you were a foreign power looking to weaken America, you couldn't ask for anything better than Hillary Clinton as your president. So I only say this. I have a very, very simple policy. It's called America first. We're going to put America first. We're going to make trade deals that are good for us. We're going to make trade deals that are good for us, not good for some other country. We don't put America first. And the reason is because the donors, special interests and lobbyists have total power over our politicians. They have no power over me. I'm going to do what's right for our country. And we're going to do it in a very friendly manner. We're going to have great relationships, better than we do now. I mean, we don't have good relationships with Mexico. We don't have good relationships with China. We don't have good relationships with most of these countries, and they do nothing but take advantage of us. We're going to have great relationships, but it's going to be a two-way street instead of a one-way street. We'll have actually better relationships. So I only say this. I have great respect for home builders. I have great respect. Because I grew up with a home builder. He's a really good home builder. And I used to sit at his knee with blocks, and I'd watch my father or listen to my father negotiate on the phone with the plumbers and the sheetrockers and the electricians and all of them. And I learned. He didn't say, listen to this. This is the way you negotiate. No, it's just I listened for so many years that by the time I was 14 or 15, I think I, knew I could build a home as well as I could build it today. I learned tremendous. Tremendous things from a home builder, from a very good home builder, from a man that loved what he was doing. He didn't like taking vacations because he got bored. He wanted to build another house. It's true. He loved, and like you people, you love, you, you, can't, you can't wait to get back, right? You're saying, get Trump off. I want to get back and build another house. <laughs> but, but I learned from a man. I learned so many things, and now we're doing well. And who would think I, this was never in the cards for me? I mean, if it were, I probably would have had a little softer path. I would have moderated. I wouldn't have spoken to Howard so much and had fun. But people get it, you know. Look, we're living in the real world. People get it. I mean, they, they really get it. But I'll tell you what, I learned what I have. And I created a phenomenal company, one of the best. I have some of the greatest real estate assets in the world, right next door, Doral, as an example. But I learned what I had and what I have from a home builder. A home builder taught me everything I know, essentially. Now, I've learned and I've grown and I've done things, and he would be very proud to see that we're running for the presidency and we beat a lot of people to get to this position. But I was just saying, when I came out, I just thought, as I walked out, I learned so much, so much from a home builder. There is no greater thing you can do. You're great people. I know so many of you. And I really know all of you, because I know where you come from. I know your mindset. You are amazing people. You can do amazing things. Now go back and build homes and create jobs, and we will make, together, America great again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.